Alrighty, we're getting going here right now on YouTube. How's it, YouTube? I'm going to bring in our friends on Facebook Live, and we're going to go live. And it's Wednesday night. It's hump day. It's a big day because the game is set. Hawaii football versus San Jose. That game is set. So all we got to do is sit back and wait for the game to start at this point. We get ready. 1 p.m. Hawaii time on Saturday. I'm going to check in with Warrior Nation pretty soon. So if you're in Warrior Nation or you've been posting in there, I want to come and uh, uh, give you some exposure for that. Uh, today, <laughs> how's it to Fuchsia out there? I just got a text from her, one of our old pictures from the, the Jets game last year. I know all of our Hawaii sports fans were just, you know, at this time last year going to games, um, going on great trips. And that's what we do here at Hawaii Sports Fans. I, I craft such, uh, you know, uh, memorable experiences, I'll say, of such, you know. But, you know, I've done them about 20 tours now, and um, all of them. Obviously, most of them take place during football season. Uh, most of them are football related, so it's kind of weird not having uh, that traditional tailgate. I know um, my boy Sean texted me today talking about how can we just tailgate and sit in pods, and you know we might have to do that eventually. You know, not we don't know where we're gonna be next year, um, but in the meantime, we can talk about this week's game, and I'm really excited about. Uh, who's coming to town to Aloha Stadium and that's right coming to town to Aloha Stadium and that is uh, San Jose State the Spartans I want to make sure that uh, we're set on Facebook uh, <laughs> Okay, Fuchsia's in too. Can you guys hear me okay and everything? All right, I'm guessing you guys can hear me and everything. Okay um, But yes, yeah, so when I think of San Jose <laughs> I think about uh, 2018, two, two years ago, playing San Jose. Because we were supposed to play San Jose there. We've played San Jose every year since 1996, except one time. That was crazy. I read that. And the last time we played San Jose, we're going to talk about that game a little bit. Shevin started last year. I don't know if you remember that game. Cole sat. Um, Roll bench goal that game. And, uh, you know, Shevin came out and drove the offense and San Jose drove their offense too so many times that we never punted and neither did San Jose the only time in FBS history that two teams didn't punt so that was the game last year but anyways I don't want to talk about that anymore because we want to talk about why I'm running on the field with that, that flag and that was a fun game uh, that was um, five uh, uh, 2018 five five quintuple overtime right five overtimes right it went into and that was a fun game uh, but um that was in san jose obviously at sparkling stadium and then i was like okay hey, maybe we should jump on the field for the game and um as you can see field storm they field storm did on san jose and um that was one of the few times that, that was two years ago, so I think a lot of people actually saw that video on Twitter that went around, but um, the ironic part was, as I am jumping on the field and going around, everybody's going into the stands. And yeah, me. I'm supposed to be at Beyonce and Jay-Z. So, anyways, um, this is 2018, okay? Picture this, Hawaii sports fans just had a trip to New York. We went to see Hawaii at Army. We also went to see the Jets, New York Jets. We went to see New York Mets. We went to see a New York Yankees in the Bronx. And Fuchsia was there when I uh, parallel parked our 15 passenger van in the Bronx in front of a bodega perfectly. That's what you can expect when you come to Hawaii Sports Fan. Okay? Fun in like any borough of New York City that we choose. I somehow racked up about $125 in toll fees during those four days. But that's because I take you guys on such crazy experiences like this. Anyways, so I was like still pumped from going to New York and I'm like, in New York. And we're like excited because obviously that song's always in your head, right? Like Jay Z and um, Alicia Keys. And anyways, I was thinking about that song so much and then my friend Joanna was like, let's go to see the Carters, uh, Beyonce and Jay Z. And they were performing that night at Levi Stadium. And I was like, okay, we're just gonna make it after this game, can go home, shower, or whatever. 
Uh, five overtimes later. No showering. Clearly, they're already started the concert. Even Beyonce has gone on by this time. I miss Beyonce for this and not take it every day. It was better than Beyonce. Like Fuchsia said, it was better than... Okay, Fuchsia doesn't like her laugh. Sorry, I turned it off. Okay? But, nonetheless... Nonetheless, I made it to the concert. And it was funny because it was so hard to get to the left. Me and Joanna had to leave Spartan Stadium. I was super jazzed about this game. We're like, okay, I guess we're not showering. Okay, I guess we're just going straight to the freaking concert at Levi's. Because this is in San, San Jose, right? Which is also uh, where Levi's Stadium is, Santa Clara County. So you're probably hearing a lot about Santa Clara County uh, recently. By the way, um, this is being podcasted out. So if you're if you're listening to podcasts, if you're an avid podcast listener, please search for the Hawaii Sports Fans channel. And I plan on providing a lot of different kind of content even, and uh, new podcast type material with bringing some new friends. So look for the Hawaii Sports Fans channel, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, Google Podcasts, all kind. Okay, Roger. Anyways, back to San Jose. I wanted to like make sure I plugged that. Um, San Jose, uh, we made it to Beyonce and Jay-Z and as we got out of the lift, we finally got there and we're still far. If you guys know Levi, it's crazy anyways. Levi's is like the craziest, craziest stadium to drive in and out of or get in and out of, period. So people complain about Los Stadium. Levi Stadium is next level, okay? It's next level. Anyways, I got out of the car finally. Me and John are like running down in San Jose. I was like, where's the lift? I have to get to Beyonce and Jay-Z. And then we got in the lift, the guy took us and we're like, get us out! And we're running and then all you hear is, in New York! And I was like, no! But I guess we kind of still heard it because we were running into the stadium. But we heard it as much as like the homeless people that were on the street next to the places that we were running to get to the stadium. So, I mean, I guess they enjoyed the concert as much as we did. Because, uh, yeah. But anyway, that was a fun night. So that'll be San Jose memories, okay? Plus, that was just an awesome game. Go back and watch that game. That was such a crazy game. Um, Fuchsia nearly fainted. I nearly fainted. We also nearly... Oh, we were celebrating her birthday. Where's your birthday? Yeah, over there too. It was fun. Fun time. So, um, yeah, this is crazy super fan kind of thing. Oh, super fan. So, I, I, you know, the other clip, I didn't play the... You know, I have to play with Miano. Shout out so follow um, for the Miano shout out uh, at the game. You got your neighbors. You got old school throwback jerseys. That was one. Oh, but anyways, the only reason I play that not because just because I want to hear my name, but also my grandma had heard that my grandmother is very um, much uh, a tough critic on myself. I'm try, I try not to cry. I know how everything I do is wrong. I thought it'd be funny. She'd be like, oh, she would be unimpressed that I uh, was recognized and my name was read. But at the same time, um, you know, that would. It's, it's still good to have memories in the stadium because she's in there. Uh, I'm holding her. If you can see, you can see me kind of. Uh, he points out I'm wearing the throwback jersey, Robert Kikala, but I'm holding my grandma's picture. So. Uh, that's a shout out for <laughs> not to make things on a serious turn, but I didn't. Uh, it, I thought that was kind of cool. So, this is also my grandmother. I used to host a show on TV called Back West Magazine, and I could never afford um, the kind of advertisement that they would have uh, in the Star Advertiser uh, that large. But luckily, um, OC16 was paying for like, like got a banner, and my face was on it, and I just like. My grandma's like reading the paper and then like she looks at it and she like scrolls down and I'm like waiting for her to look at it and she's like What? Oh yeah, that's you, cool. Okay. Like that's my grandma. Also the same lady that I did a Hawaiian Telecom commercial and my other friend she was in a um, Jack in the Box commercial. And okay, the Jack in the Box commercial was definitely funnier. But my grandma was like watching the she'd watch my commercial and be like, Oh, hey, that's you, right? Oh yeah. Oh my god, that, that commercial is hilarious. The Jack in the Box commercial, you would go crazy. And I was my friend. And I was like, oh, wow, Grandma, rubbing it in. 
Okay, Grandma. So they they said my name again on, on television. Hopefully, you're impressed up there. Uh, but it's I do miss being in the stadium. I do miss uh, being able to uh, you know be with all of you. But I think uh, you know in the circumstances that we are in right now, it's nice to just have a game, right? It's nice to be able to just have come some kind of normalcy. And even in this weird times, um, you know. Uh, we still played all of our games, right? Hawaii Football League. We played six of our eight scheduled games, which is really impressive. I mean, we're only one of two schools that have done that. And um, San Jose, the school that we bring in, they kind of got job last week, or they kind of felt that way because they, um, you know, they expected to play. I'm just going to put my other video there anyway, if you can see me running. They expected to be playing, you know, this week against um, Hawaii Football, or, against, or last week against Boise State. Boise State, uh, due to some tests coming back or some weird complications with that, they ended up, um, you know, uh, I, almost, I almost said backing out. I almost said backing out. I, I don't think Boise wouldn't be scared of San Jose. But this is a year where Boise can definitely not afford to lose to anybody. And San Jose is playing really well. I mean, that should scare us as well. But you know what? We beat Nevada last week. Thanks for all of those who joined me on our coverage. You know, I had coverage uh, at halftime and then at, after the game as well. And um, uh, yeah, everybody came in. It was pretty cool. I saw like a bunch of people in there live at halftime. That's pretty cool, pretty cherry. So um, make sure that you guys come and stay subscribed, like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at HI Sports Fans on Twitter, on Instagram. Facebook at us is Hawaii Sports Fans slash Hawaii Sports Fans. Um, YouTube slash Hawaii Sports Fans and um, also the Hawaii Sports Fans channel wherever you listen to podcasts. So now that we're podcasting and we're going, I want you to jump on the podcast. Um, Nolan Chan asks, well, first he says, Sup, Wayne. Are you surprised our next game actually played at Aloha Stadium? Yes, I am surprised actually. Do you think Nevada a better team or San Jose State? Guess the final score. I say Hawaii 34 21. Okay, so thank you, Nolan, for that. Mahalo. Um, I'm actually really surprised, but they really didn't have any choice. I, I, wow, to, to have a game, you know, Hawaii you know, is like usually the last, 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 last choice to host anything. Like, legit, they'd rather play something somewhere on Mars, I feel like, before they come to Hawaii, the NCAA, anybody, right? They're like, oh, Hawaii is so far. You gotta fly like a thousand miles. Actually, okay, more than that. But you gotta fly like a million miles away to get there. And it's like, um, still it's not that far and it's fine but you know that's the perception right so yes i'm very surprised because they're like we have literally exhausted all our options i saw humble state and i'm going to talk to steven Sai about this later so you see steven Sai from the Honolulu advertiser is going to be joining me soon um i about i i saw i don't know if he reported on this but i saw the rumor about humble state um and one of my best friends just happens to be the ad there so I got to talk to her, and um, she was like, "Aole, aole no." Uh, that means no in Hawaiian, but she said no. She said it in English, though. But um, she uh, said that. Um, th I, I mean, she kind of. I, I didn't dig or pry too much, but I, it sounded like it was a possibility, or that um, it was brought up. Because she wasn't like, "No, that's crazy." It was more like, "No, it's not happening." So whatever. But I know that that got reported. Um. All right, um, how's it, Kave? Hi, Jennifer. The Daltons. Um, but uh, you know, the game is still being played, which is really amazing. I, it's so crazy. I, I don't know how we got. We've already got six of our games, and this game, which was threatened, still is being played. Like that's that's amazing. It's a miracle. So hopefully, it's good. You know, I think at least um, for the pay-per-view contract. Yeah. You know, you have to have so many games, right? So I think that it's necessary to have this game played to even fulfill the contract, the contractual obligations. So, um, you know, we they they'll, they'll UH will lose out on money, if, I, I guess, if they don't play this game. So it's good. Um, you know, and also, uh, oh, sorry, I'm asked. You're also Nolan. Also asked, do you think Nevada is a better team than San Jose? And I would have said yes last week. And you know, San Jose didn't play last week. I, I wish San Jose had played Boise. Then I, I would know better. I think if I would have a better answer for you. But 
I feel like um, San Jose is uh, a dangerous team. You know, they have a you know potent offense as well. They are people. They are a team that um, you know clearly is uh, not intimidated. If you go and look at their you know their social media, you look at some of their um, just the verbiage. I've been pretty impressed. Also, this past summer, some of you have been following me, right? Um, during the Black Lives Matter, or during the heart of, heat of the Black Lives Matter movement, really in June, and during that time, you know, especially because there was no sports going on, and and college players were still starting to adapt to their platforms and being able to, um, you know, feel empowered that they can say things. You know, all of that confluence of everything that happened in June, a lot of the Mountain West teams. Not Hawaii. Hawaii was the very last to jump on board to this, and some of you might agree with that. It uh, is up to you. You know, obviously on my show, I, I was pretty um, vehement of what direction I, I I wanted to make sure that I, I um, was pushing the, the conversation. And um, you know, I think uh, San Jose is one of those schools. Obviously, a long history of social justice causes on that campus. San Jose, um, um, the fist. Uh, track athletes you know those are San Jose so they have a, the, the um, um, they have uh, Tommy um, sorry his name is escaping me you guys all know what I'm talking about uh, in the Olympics the Mexico City Olympics when he made the fist they have a statue of that on their campus so this is a San Jose State uh, school that is obviously kind of pretty progressive but I you know like the attitude off the field on the field it's like a new San Jose. Like this isn't like a wimpy San Jose or just like a joke San Jose or people want to like definitely even last year they were tough, right? And the year before that, obviously five overtimes and then last year we went by two points with nobody punting in the whole game. So this is a tough team. Plus they're one of our rivals. They're definitely one of our rivals. We don't um, give them as much credit as one of our rivals because um, we don't lose uh, and you know the thing is they're they're tied the series is tied at home i believe sorry let me go get um pull up my notes sorry. uh okay that's a lie i don't have the notes so i just have the internet i just talk uh but um you know i think san jose is one of those schools that is looking for respect and the boise game would have been huge for them and i know they really feel like they missed on an opportunity and this could have been the year I mean, how many years do you really can... How does a team have a legitimate shot to go in to Boise and win? And I'm talking anybody in the country, it's hard It's hard to win in Boise, period. Period. Anybody. At any time. Right? Any team in the whole country, it's difficult to win in Boise. But for San Jose to really have a squad that felt like they could... They could, um, you know... Uh, match up with um, San Jose... Uh, match up with Boise. I would have been cool, so... It's hard for me to say who's better, uh, Nolan, because Nevada or San Jose, because I didn't see the game last week. I think, and this is, you know, it's week to week as well. Just like the NFL, right? A week to week league. The NFL is a week to week league, right? If you're a Rams fan, you're like, the Rams are the Rams are terrible. Oh my gosh, the Rams are great. And then you're like, the Rams are terrible. Right? One of my teams is the Rams. Obviously a Chiefs fan, so I'm glad to be a Chiefs fan as well. And I've been a Chiefs fan for 30 years, so I'm going to just enjoy every, um, you know, any kind of uh, celebration that I can get out of being a Chiefs fan, but I've also been a, obviously Hawaii sports fans are we are Rams um, oriented organiz uh, not oriented organization we are Rams um, you know partner in a way that we have a great seats at the SoFi Stadium. So the Hawaii sports fans was a person they would be, which is kind of it because the Supreme Court said that companies well, I'm not a corporation though I'm just, Hawaii sports fans is like. A limited liability corporation which I guess also counts as a human under the Supreme Court ruling but um, they would be probably Ramsey and be very depressed after what happened this past year um, but San Jose is one of those teams that has won every week and it looks really good so it's gonna be a tough game I mean the Nevada game was huge like I talked about this a lot you know like it's a huge game it's a huge win um, last week was a, a giant win for for UH football so um, uh, you know, I think a lot of people would rather. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna help you with Steven Sai real quick. Uh, so Steven Sai is gonna be on. So come if you if you uh, are looking for Steven, he's gonna be on very soon. We're just having some little bit connection issues. He'll be here soon. But uh, the San Jose game is gonna be a tough one. You know, and that, uh, I talked about this past week. It was a huge win for Hawaii football. That game was giant. You know, that game was 
huge in that, um, you know, I, I, again, you know how I'm a huge optimist all the time about our team, and I was definitely like hoping that we would win, but I was like, this is a tough team. Like, this is legit a good team, right? Nevada, and I'm not saying like, obviously, Boise is good, but, um, you know, um, legitimately, uh, Nevada is like a tough team and what we were able to do last week was so impressive and I'm really you know still to this day I'm like wow that was a, a, such a great win and such a good win for coach Graham um, and I think he really uh, I think especially on the offensive side I thought they really made some good adjustments and they made they they, they showed that there there's more than just the run game right some people are getting scared right we in Fresno we're like okay we can this works we have four rushing touchdowns and then people are saying Chow, and then people are saying Todd Von Chow. Fuchsia. <laughs> well, Fuchsia sent me a tweet. Okay, I, that Todd Von Chow will go down. This is a great name, let's be honest. It's just hilarious. But, no, right? Um, but, you know, people are saying, hey, we're Hawaii. We're offense. We want to see offense. And last week we saw a bunch of passing yards. Chevin put up a bit, um, some big numbers. And uh, Calvin Turner put on a show. And uh, we put on a huge win. So I think the, we play that way against San Jose. Yes, absolutely. Well, I have a, a you know, um, we should be fine. Uh, or at least be competitive. But San Jose is a good team. I would not, they should not be underrated. Absolutely at all. Um, also, this is Nolan. Sorry, Nolan. If there's anybody else has questions. Uh, oh, Nolan says final score 34-21. Yeah, I can see that. It seems like a pretty good score. Um, I think some people are, you know, um, kind of curious as to how, what San Jose is going to look like. But if we look at what they did last year, if we look at, um, you know, just how strong they've been in the last, uh, you know, few seasons, uh, it's, it's not going to be a walk in the park. You know, these people, San Jose is not a team that's going to play. And that's the thing that, um, you know, I think is really respectable about them is that they they, they definitely are, are looking for respect and, and that's uh, dangerous too when you're playing against a team like that because they really feel like they have nothing to lose. Um, you know, that's I think that's scary enough, right? Any team, regardless, but a team that's undefeated and playing like that. Um, and you know, their coach, um, Brent Brennan, is Colt Brennan's cousin too. And Colt, Colt talked about that. He almost played up there at San Jose for um, Brent Brennan. So... Um, you know, there's there's always a little bit of rival. There's going to be always a little bit of rivalry with San Jose because even off the field, there's recruiting battles. Um, and you know, there are a lot of kids from Hawaii that go up there. There are a lot of Polynesians on that San Jose State team, right? And in Hawaii, we always thought for the longest time we're the team in the Pacific. All the Hawaiians can come to all the Samoans, Tongans, right? Um, Uaeans, if they're out there and play football, um, you know. And uh, the Sierra got out, right? Samoans are really good at football. Samoans are really, really good at football. And everybody knows, you know, Hawaiians are good at everything. But also, um, Polynesians can go everywhere now. They play everywhere. Tua Tango Bailoa, obviously. You know, one of, it's amazing to see somebody like him um, from Hawaii and a boy that, you know, grew up in Evo Beach and to, to do it, be on that stage. Obviously, Marcus being on that stage. Tua going to Alabama. Of course, Marcus going to Oregon. Wow. Tua going to Alabama, you're like, you're seeing all of these things. Of course, I want all the local boys to go to Hawaii. I don't want to preface that, first of all. I think local boys hopefully you can stay home and play for Hawaii, especially with the opportunity. You can still play in the NFL, like John Ursula, Jelani Tavai, you know, those two guys I got to interview when we talked about um, what it means to play for the home team and uh, how you can still, you know, um, make it, make your dream come true wherever you play. And, you know, John Ursua had a great career at UH. And I knew that was going to happen when he was in high school. I called it. That's one of the only guys I called for his brother. He's definitely got to come to Hawaii. He's going to play a lot. And he's going to go to the NFL. He did. So, I'm happy about that. But, um, right now, it's it's, uh, it's 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 tough waters. The Mountain West is tough. The Mountain West is really, really good. Um, and that's, you know, hard to understate. Obviously, San Diego State, you know, they're in the rearview mirror now. We forget about them. But, they kind of whacked us. Yeah, we probably play them again. Maybe it'd be different. Play them at home. Maybe it'd be different. But you know, they totally outplayed us. Um, I asked about the the season, the, the the series against San Jose, and it's actually um, UH leads twenty two nineteen and three. So actually, 
we beat them three times, but we also tied them. We, we beat them three more times, but we also tied them three times. So statistically, it's pretty, pretty, pretty even um, series, right? It's not like uh, these guys are... Uh, uh, Sorry, I'm gonna Steven Sai as well. Say when you're your own engineer, I'm doing my engineering gig on the on the other side. Like hello, I talk to myself. Um, okay, I get that one in the last. Could act like of all these people, man. Um, no, uh, this game is gonna be a tough game. We're gonna hear from Steven Sai and hear about all you know the tough um, circumstances that they're playing this game under. I mean. To pull it off is pretty impressive, I have to admit. I'm kind of surprised. But um, this this whole season has been a little bit of a surprise. <clears throat> Last time San Jose State won was in Hawaii, 2015. Uh, Norm Chow was the coach. Um, November 21st, 2015. Uh, no, he wasn't the coach. He was fired by then, actually. So, um... um uh, our coach was uh, interim coach. Uh, see what happens when I say that UH boy, that people from Hawaii, local boys, should go to UH. And, you, and I start forgetting guys who were interim coach for UH who played for the mainland. See, when you play for the mainland, sometimes you're, you forget their name. I was one of those people that played on the mainland. I had to send home my stories from the news. You were just relegated to a small spot on the Star Advertiser, where you deserve to be, because UH should get the headlines. And this guy, Steven Sai, who we'll have on soon, um, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. I'm uh, trying to get him connected. So we have a little bit of connection issues, but uh, definitely the circumstances with San Jose are not an easy ones to play under, and we're still doing it. And it's been pretty incredible um, to see, like we said, us being able to pull off six games of six while other schools in the Mountain West aren't able, haven't been able to. Um, I'm trying to connect, so sorry. I'm, at the same time, I'm connecting with Steven. Um, and that's been something that has been uh, a storyline, right? If you look at throughout football, not just the NFL, uh, not just in college, but in the NFL as well. And, um, today, there was a game, right? How weird is that? There's a game today, and... They're just like, uh, okay, a Wednesday game that we have to be pushed. But then the Denver Broncos couldn't have any quarterback, which it was their fault. You know, that's why the Broncos put it. That's why the Broncos um, still had to play that game. They broke the protocols. But um, it is a little bit um, strange, right? Um, not being able to know whether your team is going to be playing that week. But that is kind of, um, you know, you know that's that's the the challenge of um, this season with COVID. It's like you really never know what's going to happen, and you know I hope that people will um, you know regard this season as something that was just separate. I I mean it, it'll all the records will count, everything will count, but it's just so weird for me. I don't know. You can think of this year as I, I guess if we won the championship or we would could. Who knows? I don't think statistically we could still win the Mount West Championship, but if we could, I mean, maybe we could, uh, you know, um, win it all. So, oh, here comes Steven Sykes. So. Okay, so we'll see if Steven can connect. We're live connecting. I, I had some issues too on my end, so Steven had some issues. Hey I, I also had some issues with me on my end as well, so. Um, I, I thought. I apologize. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. I'm just glad that, uh, okay, there we go. There we go. There's the man. Let me, there we <laughs> let me bring the video back up. Um, I'm in a car though. <laughs> yeah. Let me make sure that we're still going on Facebook. I'm pretty sure we are. Uh, so if you're in okay. Facebook land, because no, there were some connection issues even on my end. So, okay. It looks like we're still I going. Apologize. We're still going. No, you're fine. Um, yes. Hey, Wayne. Okay. 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 Looks like we're good. Um, let me turn my microphone up. Oh, looks like I might have muted myself. Testing. Okay, here we go. Um, all right. Well, Steven Sai <laughs> of the audio uh, of the. Uh, let's see. Okay, I, I I have you, I have you on the screen now. But okay. um, 
I'm trying. I have to. You know, I asked. Uh, I with all the issues, obviously, you're, you've been rolling with the punches yourself. Uh, I know having to figure out what the story is going to be, where we're going to play. But uh, just talk to about that today. You know, that's the breaking story, and you know uh, how it how the it finally came down to the game being played at Aloha Stadium. Yeah, so it was um, it was just really a fast thing. I think it all started with um, um, San Jose finding out that um, well, well, they were just about to play boy uh, after they played Boise uh, or didn't play Boise that um, that there can be county restrictions put on and that he wouldn't be able to host a game in their county. And if they left the county, they wouldn't be able to uh, come back uh, without quarantine for 14 days. So it was kind of a scary, kind of a strange uh, um, deal for San Jose State. Um, they talked to Hawaii. They're trying to negotiate something. Um, they were initially trying to go out to Humboldt State, which is about yeah. 330 miles away. Mm-hmm. But um, they were kind of concerned that California was going to be a, a total lockdown, as opposed to um, just only um, that, um, uh, that that county, Santa Clara County. So that kind of forced them to look at other options. I think they were really looking at um, strongly at um, uh, Las Vegas. I think they wanted to play. Um, um, either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, and they just couldn't work out the details. And it was getting kind of late for Hawaii, too, mm. because Hawaii was um, scheduled to leave this afternoon um, uh, for the game, and um, you know, there just wasn't enough time to get arrangements. And you just can't fly over and do a game. You have to, yeah. book, you have to plan meals, all kinds of stuff. You know how it is. I mean, you're, you're, you're wonderful when you used to get all those road games, but <laughs> it's a little bit harder when you're traveling parties. Oh, around yeah. People. So they just couldn't make it work, and they just said, you know what? We've got the ticket to go out to San Jose. Why don't you just take the ticket and flip it around and just come out here? So that's what's going to happen. Aren't you impressed still, though? I mean, just with how logistics are being thrown around at this speed, like during a pandemic and with traditional, you know, leadership and bureaucracies that don't move that quick. I mean, do you think this is something that's just like, oh, because we want to get these games played and we need to because, you know, there's obviously different things on the line, but... Is this something moving forward? Because, you know, it's just like scheduling takes forever. You know, it takes time. But Yeah. You know? Yeah, look at the basketball team. Look how hard it is just to schedule a, a pre-conference game. It, yeah, mm-hmm. things take a while. you gotta, you know, you've got to book hotels, travel. It's just, it's just a crazy amount of work. But um, And then also, I think you have to hand it to uh, David Matlin for kind mm-hmm. of just standing up and just saying, hey, um, you know, uh, we can't just be pushed around. You just can't place us anywhere and, and at such late dates, you know. The best option is Hawaii. Hawaii is the mm-hmm. safest place. And, you know. Just uh, you know, you should just come out here. And he, um, when negotiations weren't going uh, better or quicker to go to say Las Vegas or something, mm-hmm. he just, I think he just put his foot down and said, you know, awesome. come to Hawaii, and uh, and it kind of worked out well. And uh, it, now they have that, you know, every year they have to rotate. You know, they played San Jose one year, they played Hawaii the next. Mm-hmm. And the way they work this deal out is it doesn't impact next year, so um, San Jose will still come over here next year. Wow! Oh my gosh, man, San Jose must have been really painted into a corner then at that point. I think so, and uh, San Jose really needs to play the game. Um, they're four and zero now, but I think there's a threshold of how many games you need to play um, uh, to qualify for the, um, the championship game. And I, ah. they were kind of looking around five, and you never can tell with next week's game against the batter whether that can be played or yeah. not. Weather conditions, COVID conditions. So I, I think they just have to make sure that they play the game, and they really need to play a game. Their last two games were um, canceled because of the pandemic, so. Um, they just said, you know, if we got to go to Hawaii, let's go to Hawaii. And, you know, they, they, that's, that's what's happening. And the San Jose State team obviously is a team that is looking for some respect. You know, last week they did go to Boise, right? They flew all the way to Boise, didn't they? Right. They were going. In, and that was supposed to be a huge game. That was going to be yeah. on national TV, the real national TV. And <laughs> um, it just got canceled hours before. And that's really unfortunate because yeah. um, uh, people get tested all the time. And if uh, it, it sounded like it was a, a problem with um, – a lot of guys having negative tests at a lot at mm. certain positions because mm. you need a minimum amount of people at certain like four, you need four defensive linemen things like that. And it just ah. seemed like they should have known that they were gonna. Boise should have known um, that it was gonna get in some kind of trouble because it had been in trouble the previous uh, two games and they were still managed to play, but then they just couldn't um, field enough players uh, eligible to play at home, which is kind of strange because you have more available players at home. Yeah. That's yeah, that exactly right. You that's why you have you can put a hundred whatever guys on the roster. Right. Um, but now that we are you know into the game and now that the game is being played and San Jose clearly wanted this game to be played, like they're like, okay, we'll go to Hawaii, whatever, and we'll come next yeah. year again. 
um, you know, what is what what do you think are going to be? Do you think San Jose is just like itching and they're just like, you know, ready to explode? Or, you know, how do you how do you see just the circumstances surrounding the game affecting the game if they do it all? Well, I think they're really itching to play. I think they want to prove that they're a legitimate team. Uh, they've they've they're four and oh, but the three of their wins were against kind of teams that have been really struggling, like uh, Las Vegas, Air mm-hmm. Force, New Mexico. Mm-hmm. So they've only had really one quality win. That was against San Diego State. And yeah. Even that game was a little bit different because San Diego State um, had thought that they were going to be facing a passing quarterback. Mm-hmm. He got, the starting quarterback got hurt really early, and then they went with a running quarterback, and San Jose State totally changed its game plan. Ah. So I think that really kind of just changed things around, and that might have affected the outcome of that game. So, um, But um, one of the things that um, the San Jose State coaches – worried about is he says it's kind of like a, um, a basketball team when the, the top seeds get buys and then they play a team that had played its way into the tournament mm-hmm. um, that team that's played its way and it's, has the rhythm it's got the momentum they've been on the court and their team has kind of been sitting around and even though they're the superior team and have the better record they just haven't played enough that week and that's a big concern for um, San Jose State mm-hmm. is that Hawaii's played um, all the way through they played six games in a row and they played very well yeah. the last six quarters and now um now, um, San Diego, um, San Jose State has not played in two weeks. It'll be three weeks by the time the game comes. And um, with all the travel and everything, they just might not be as sharp. And I think that's one of the big concerns is that uh, they won't have the, that rhythm of the game that they, they also need. You know, when we think about San Jose, um, we kind of think about Fresno, just their proximity. And we play both of those teams. Like, we always play them both on the, on the road or both at home or whatever. But, you know, that Fresno game always gets to be the one where, like, ooh, it's Fresno, and they're the rival, and blah, blah, blah. And I even, you know, hype that one up as much, too. But San Jose, like, that rivalry is actually, like, tight. Like, that's basically tied. But we never, you know, we haven't really seen them that way. And do you think that's just because of San Jose? Do you think it's, things are changing? Or um, what do you think it is? What It's this peculiar case, right, of San Jose State and, and who they are and where they are next to Stanford, and they get overlooked by so much... Um, but you think we overlook them even at Hawaii? Um, I, I think so. And for some reason, uh, San Jose just plays really well against Hawaii. Mm. They've had some epic games. Um, uh, June Jones's first uh, uh, year, uh, I oh, think they right. had some really great big games. Um, the, the Cole Brennan year, mm-hmm. uh, 2007, they, they had to win it out uh, late. And a few years ago, it was a five-overtime game. Uh, it, it's just something about them that really just motivates San Jose State and they just play better, uh, you know, even uh, better than the had normally played during the year so it's just i don't know what it is it's just something about i don't know the rivalry i don't know if it's because of the dick tomey trophy now but it just seems that there's something that just makes this sort of a great game and uh mm-hmm. i think the the head coach said um you know grab get some popcorn and get ready because it's gonna be a fun game well this mountain west has really stepped up it seems like every team is um you know even new mexico I mean, that's a team you know one of the teams we beat right it's like they're they're not like yeah. just slugging off against other opponents do you think um it's just a wacky year. If it was, if it was a normal year, quote unquote, do you think it would still look like this? Kind of like the teams would be strong, or, or do you think it's just has it a, a trend where the Mountain West just is getting strong? Yeah, I think Mountain West is getting stronger, but I also think it's such a unique year where um, mm. it's just league games. Well, it's mostly league games only. I think Air Force has a couple of out of conference games um, against the academies, but um, everyone sees everybody and. In fact, uh, any fan can watch every game because I think every every game is uh, uh, is shown on uh, some well, TV channel that can be accessed by anyone in Hawaii. Mm. So um, it's just such a familiarity, and you, you study, and then after a while, there just are no secrets. And I think um, everyone gets to know everybody. It just makes it harder to surprise teams. I think uh, mm-hmm. that's that's why it's been kind of impressive what Hawaii's been doing the past couple of weeks because mm-hmm. they've been putting in new defenses all the time. They've been kind of changing up the offense a lot. And, yeah. Uh, it just seems that uh, that that's hard to do when everyone seems to think that you know what you're going to do. Well, that's something you know, Coach Kenny. Uh, you hear what people want to say or people say about the offense. And offense is always going. You always know people are always going to look at the offensive side of our team first, right? That's what we have established ourselves is uh, that identity. So it's going to be more criticism on that side. And I, I feel like Coach Kenny really made a concerted effort to to change it up. And I, the yardage speaks for itself. And I don't want to just look at the stats and how many more passing yards. But um, do you? Do you think do you see that with Coach Kenny or the offensive staff really just trying to revolutionize things week to week? And you know, have you seen that kind of uh, play out so far the way you expected? I think so, and I, and I think it's going to get better because they're going to play faster once you get more mm. comfortable and familiar with this offense. Uh, this offense is made, I, I think, back in the old uh, Tulsa days. It used to be uh, fourteen seconds from um, 
um, setting up the snap to, to get in the playoff. So uh, it's, it's an offense that's supposed to go really quick. It's supposed to create a lot of problems for the defense because they, they're, they're running so quickly. And, um, and uh, Coach Cameron says they're not at that pace yet. And it's going to be kind of scary when they kind of get their offense going and then play at a really quick pace. If anybody has any questions out there, we had some viewers, we had some connection issues, we lost some viewers, but uh, we'll see if some people have some things uh, to ask. But, you know, for you, it's been a, you know, obviously weird situation as well. You have to fly on planes and still go to airports and do your job and go to places and be in, you know, press boxes and stuff. What has, you know, kind of been the biggest change for you? And is it, um, you know, something that you expected it was going to be a bigger challenge or, you know, how, how has that experience for your job been impacted? Do you think? I think so. And I, I was kind of naive about this because I always thought that viruses don't live very long outside the body. I thought, mm -hmm. you know, if we just washed our hands, wore masks and kind of kept our distance, that this would have been over a lot longer, a long time ago. And it, mm -hmm. I was really surprised that it's, it's still around. And it's even actually increasing in numbers on the mainland. That, that kind of surprised me and it led to different types of ways you can, cover the team or just interact with the mm. team and i've i've only um since february um I, I talked to graham maybe two three times a week but um i've only been in the same room with them uh i think well, once since february so uh, everything's through zoom and things like that and um uh, we don't get to see the practices and the fans don't get to see the practices i think uh i think that's kind of hurt the um mm. sort of the interaction of the program i think um players yeah. and the team really f uh, feed off the energy of the fans mm. and I know that they appreciate you and uh, making all those shifts and just kind of, you know, just being yeah, around and of course. knowing the support and feeling it, especially on the mainland because it yeah. seems the voice support the mainland is just so great. Yeah. And I think that, I think you can play the games, you can simulate the crowd noises and everything, you put the cardboard um, fans up, but you just need fans, you need that, and that, that, that's what they play for. And every time you hear um, players, uh, local players saying they're staying home, they said they're staying home because they want to play in front of their uh, mm. friends and family. And, yeah, you know, and I true. Think they, I think they miss that. and. You can, they can try to create a lot of things and try to create, but you can start to re recreate the mood. And mm -hmm. even when uh, you went to Fresno, you mm -hmm. can just also tell yeah. they they miss the enemies. Uh, they, they miss the, the yeah. taunting. And, uh, Fresno <laughs> had such great crowds and everything. Yeah. And it's just that, that red mile, the walk that they did to get on the field, that's just, uh, just char charges up Fresno people, it charges up the white people. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that's just sort of missing it. And I, I felt that not just for this, you know, college football, but, you know, the NBA Finals didn't seem like the NBA Finals. Yeah. The World Series just didn't feel like it. I think, uh, you know, the fans are truly a, a, a big part of, of the game. Uh, it's, it's, it's sad that, uh, for, at least for now, it's not going to be, they won't be part of it for a while. Yeah, and, and, and what are your forecasting? I know that it's hard to tell, but in terms of um, UH Athletics, put it that way, do you see all of the programs being able to play, all of this, the teams going to, you know, be able to get onto the field, or do, what are some of the major hurdles you think we have as we go into the spring or the winter season? I think the big problem is um, now that uh, now they're going to get into non-football sports. Uh, the big problem is that California's numbers are so high, mm. and I think that's going to be uh, a problem, especially with you know so many uh, the Big West teams. I think all the Big West teams, but but way are uh, are California yeah. teams, and 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 so now you have to cramp, um, try to find ways to play those games. And also, there's so many sports that got pushed into, into the spring. I think you're going to have, um, uh, have more of a condensed basketball schedule. You're going to have uh, women's volleyball playing in the spring, you know, baseball. Just I think scheduling and facilities yeah. are, are going to be a little bit of a problem. And again, the big problem also is that you're not going to have fans there. Mm -hmm. the basketball games are made to be played in front of fans, and it's going to be sad if, if they have to limit that. You know, it goes without being said, and we are, we're in uh, Hawaii and in a government that people don't trust our state with money sometimes or they they say oh we're never gonna have rail and blah 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 but you know now that we are in real some real financial danger with the uh athletics and um you know we'll stay with athletics i'm gonna talk about the stadium but you know what are what is going to be the what the biggest determining factors as to whether you know the program can sustain long term in turn and I'm not saying for doomsday reasons, but obviously it's it's huge numbers, and it would be hard for our. You know, I don't know if the legislature is still going to if there's a thing where they're always going to partition money out. But do you see financially um, some major hurdles that will require some, you know, different choices to be made there? I guess at the school. Yeah, I think so, and and you can see that you know if you're not getting the fans' money, they're not. Um, 
I think they collect the students' money, but I think they're going to end up refunding it because students aren't able to go to any of the games. Mm. So there's just a lot of money. They still gain the TV money, um, but um, the problem is, is that your um, the scholarship money still has to be paid. Coaches still have to be yeah. paid. Um, staff, have to, they have to be paid. So um, I, I'm not sure how Hawaii's able to balance the budget. All I know is that um, – Nobody's checks are bouncing and um, yeah, the lights are still working. So <laughs> I think somehow it works. I, I don't yeah. know how it works. And, yeah. But, um, and I'm not sure if there's going to be this huge bill at the end, but it, it just seems that they, uh, they've they been able to sort of manage. And, and they've gotten a lot of help. I think um, Hawaiian Airlines has helped them on the travel. Mm-hmm. And they, do, it's, they don't call it a charter flight, but I think they get things that seem like a charter flight. Like they, they, they get to buy out the whole plane. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. only the team on the plane. And I think that's sort of um, – it kind of helps get into places because uh, you know, as you know, that the uh, visiting team gets to fly to Hawaii on uh, with Hawaii paying for it. Wow, well, yeah, of course, um, yeah, yeah, and, and and now it's finally good that you know, Hawaii also seems to reap some benefits of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just being able to go to the mainland and um, not have to worry about changing air, uh, you know, planes in the airport or waiting around time or having to go through uh, you know really long lines of security. I think it just helps, and uh, and just being able to get back to Hawaii uh, mm-hmm. faster. I think I think. Um, Hawaiian Airlines has really helped, and uh, a lot of partners have kind of stepped up to, to sort of help out in this crisis. And hopefully, that continues beyond this year. Hope it's not just because it's a, a, a tough year that uh, everybody's pitching in and helping out. I hope you know, you know, yeah. the ensuing years that um, Hawaii would still get a nice kind of deal where they can fly um, and, and sort of be more prepared as they go to other places. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, those charters are such you know they change so much from commercial and. Being able to, you know, go directly to where you want to, um, but you know, this uh, year obviously is going to be something. Maybe we don't see the long-term effects right away. Like sometimes I scare that, you know, in four or five whatever years, I'll be like looking back at the pandemic season. Like, what did we learn? Like, are you afraid that like there there might be some, you know, maybe some indirect consequences from being on the field or having the kids in proximity or whatever or it's just like we just clean our hands of this once the year is over and we're like okay on to 2021 oh, oh you mean as in terms of whether it be long help yeah health i know or just anything maybe with schools you know even like schools being pinched where they're like being forced to play or like you know maybe or yeah, and, and health obviously like whether you know will the virus gets spread or something i, I don't know like or, or is it um you know that's kind of well, something uh, i fear well, well listen, some of the things i am um, uh, you can see is like um uh, with with bat with, uh, with basketball, um, uh, used to be a home a home and home games, and now mm-hmm. you can see they're playing. Uh, a team would come out here every two years, or sort of like the, how they used to do in volleyball a long time ago, where um, uh, ah. a team would come oh, out so they're playing play both games matches, at home, right? Yeah. And then the next year, then they play two at the other place, and mm-hmm. I can see that actually continuing after this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and and the one concern I have is that um, because you're not allowing fans in right now, and and they're watching pay per view, or they're not watching pay per view, or um, you might get out of the habit of actually going to the stadium because sometimes going yeah. to the stadium is a, a great experience. Mm-hmm. And if people are finding it's just easier to watch it on TV, um, gather with your friends, you can gather probably with more people, you know, in the coming years that, um, it'll, it'll just make it a, a better option to stay home. And I yeah. would hate for that to happen, but for that to become a trend of people saying, well, it's just so easy to just stay home, you know, and, yeah. uh, and then to go to, and again, I think the, the fan experience is, is actually really great for fans to see, team in person they can actually see the plays a lot better and uh and the players really appreciate that and, and are energized by it and so i think i hope that that's a trend that doesn't happen or continue well speaking of who's being energized i got a shout out kelly i don't know if you've seen him on the side he actually um not only was he there again on saturday with his banner and his flag and his partner brian and i think glenn Higa also joined him out there Edie. um but the stadium charged him for parking, legit, to cheer the team in this past week. How crazy wow. is that? To, to cheer them in. And, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, we're, this is what he's trying to do is just give them that encouragement. And, I mean, I, I think that, you know, obviously we don't want to encourage people to make a crowd. Obviously, right? We don't want to be like, everybody come down. And we, we can't. We lose track of, and I'm scared. I want to be like, everybody come. Let's go hang out outside the stadium. Like, no. I, you know, I've already tried you know pro teams that's why they want to keep people as far away as possible but um you know i think it's you're right it does and i think um the the fans at least that aspect is 
is um, has been taken away. But um, like you said, we might see a lot of uh, you know new optimizations in the way that we schedule and the way that you know we do yeah. certain things. But do you see maybe even seasons moving in the future from this? I could see that, but I, again, it goes back to um, um, space problems and, uh, and facility mm-hmm. problems, and, and I mean that's the reason that the um, uh, two volleyball teams don't play in the same t- same time. And I think that was or used to be the case in high schools that yeah. just don't have the facilities. So I think uh, that that will probably um, stay the same. But I think it's going to be harder to um, uh, book teams, non conference teams, and I think it's going to be harder to uh, get away from um, having play multiple games mm-hmm. at, at a site. It's uh, we're going more to uh, you know you play here two games this year and then and next year switch it around as opposed to, to home and home and mm-hmm. you know um, I think that's good for budgetary reasons but I think it's also hurts you uh, yeah. competitive standpoint yeah that, you know if you're yeah you know, if you have a really good team but you have to play on the road, you know another good teams uh, on the road twice you know that you kind of like lose that edge so mm. I, I just I just wish a lot of these things you know could go back to the way they were but uh, fortunately you know you know. Well, I, I go back to 9-11, you know, mm-hmm. how easy it was to travel and everything. And then mm-hmm. that 9-11 happens and then mm-hmm. uh, travel has kind of changed forever. And I think probably from this, um, things will, won't be the same for a long, long time. Well, something that did stay this year is apparently there are some bowl games that are still happening. And even non-BCS uh, or non-power games are the big ones. So um, what are the chances for, because uh, UH playing in any bowl this year and other circumstances i mean I, I haven't kept up with like are there you know certain benchmarks I, I, that need to be reached to play in a bowl well i think um, and that's that's a problem because i think the, the white bowl was created because Hawaii had trouble mm-hmm. even with great records of getting into um uh, bowl games mm-hmm. and, and 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 that became sort of a travel issue um a, a fan participation mm-hmm. uh, attendance issue and uh now with Probably no fans uh, going to the games. Um, uh, it, it just seemed too expensive and um, too inconvenient to bring a Hawaii team in. So Hawaii really needs the Hawaii Bowl. There won't be a Hawaii Bowl this year, and I think that's really going to impact um, what what could probably be a pretty good season because they have a really good chance to win out and go five and three, which would be pretty good considering yeah. all the obstacles they've gone through. Absolutely, five and three would be wow. Five and three would be a great yeah. season. Uh, but Stephen, side, I'm just grateful for your time, and I hope you had a great well, thank Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, I'm a um, technical, technological idiot. No, but, uh, not at all, not at all. This this technology is, you know, like you said, is our future. Things will change, so I definitely want to bring you on again in the future. So thank you so much for for okay, doing. Okay, I appreciate it and the invitation, and uh, I'm, I'm glad you're back doing this. I think it's a really great service to the fans and everything, and I think you do a great job. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I mean, shout out our okay. psychos. Our psycho Ohana out there as well, obviously, the Steven side gang. But mahalo, Steven. We'll see you again. Take care. All right. Take care. Thank you. Good. Okay, bye. All right. Steven Sai of the Honolulu Advertiser. Obviously, it's going to be a tough game for Hawaii football. But at the same time, like you said, San Jose hasn't been playing in a few weeks. San Jose is um, might be a little bit rusty. Um, you know, we don't know what the game ultimately you know what, what will happen because um there's so many factors but we were just talking five and three would be a great year right five and three would be awesome with the uh football uh the la bowl and sofi would be amazing and hopefully soon um like brad says thank you steven mahalo steven for that uh steven Sai and the psychos we're gonna have to shout out the psychos i've been uh, tailgating with the psychos for 13 years now hanging out with those guys and um the, we gotta shout out the boasters jerry and janice um Kokane, my uncle Tommy, uh Ian and, and James Go and all of them hanging out and all of my psychohana um sending out aloha. But um you know, I, it's nice that we can just be talking football right now. It's nice that we can be talking about um you know, uh even bowls, even though they probably won't happen this year, but five and three would be would be nice, you know. A winning season would would be nice. Uh, would be would be huge. Would be would be huge. Would would be really huge. So um, let's do that. You know, let's just end that. Not worry about the postseason, but uh, think about what the future, you know, can hold for UH football. I'm gonna go check in on Warrior Nation real quick because it's always fun to check in on Warrior Nation. And when I say check in on Warrior Nation, I mean uh, this in particular, and that is uh, Warrior Nation is uh, the Facebook group. Let me get rid of myself running on the field. Go listen to my story if you haven't yet at the beginning of the show. Um, we talked a lot. But Warrior Nation is a group. Um, it's on Facebook. And um, 
I'm one of the admins, so is Ian. But um, I'm only shouting out everybody because hey, when you like post stuff, you never know, it can pop up. But I, you know, this is a good place where there is some dialogue. And people, for the most part, use their real names and pictures, which I think is important. Um, you know, I was on the message boards back in 97. You know, Brad and I, who's watching right now, Brad, we were kids on his mom's prodigy trying to get on ESPN in 94. Four or five, I don't know, but you know, I've been doing that game for a long time, and I think um, it's uh, you know better when people meet offline. When they social media is amazing, I spend a lot of time on the computer, obviously, but you know, the the, the essence of voice sports fans and the goal is to create um, you know this inertia within the fan base that can spread and that can continue to grow. But um, I think there are a lot of great contributors on this page. There are some trolls, but um, that just happens everywhere. Um, but we have, you know, people share great content. Rob DeMello, um, you know, share some great videos and people putting those on here. Um, I guess it was Coach Kinney's birthday recently, so happy birthday, Coach Kinney. Um, Stephanie Ching, let's shout out Stephanie Ching, uh, Kiyosaki, Stevie. She said, a year ago, we made new friends in the away games at Reno and UNLV. Yes, they did. And Reno, she was there. Um, and UNLV, and um, she gave me a ride after the UNLV game, actually, with Candy and Josie and Catherine. I was in that uh, the band with them, so that's the kind of fun things that you can do. You know, I go to you know UH games. When I'm there, I'm Wayne Quito, um, the fan. Right? First of all, I'm always gonna be the fan. I love doing media stuff. I love doing all kinds of other stuff. But at the very core, I'm a fan. Um, running Hawaii sports fans, um, you know, Hawaii sports fans exists just as an extension of myself and expression of what I like to do and what I uh, enjoy doing. So. It's about um, myself and the things I like to do, but it's also something that is meant to be collective. It's meant to be um, done in a, in, with other people. You know, like Hawaii sports fans cannot just be way quite alone traveling because I do that by myself anyways, right? I go to all kinds of countries. I miss Japan and Taiwan and all my places. I miss Europe. Um, and that's fun. I need my alone time traveling. Believe me, it's so much fun because you can make new friends and just learn new things and um, be put into uncomfortable situations, but uh, during football season, I occasionally like to take groups with me. And you know, if you go to hisportsfans.com, you'll see some of our old trips. And like Steven said, uh, you know, our fans make a difference. And on the road, we make a lot of noise. Hawaii fans always bring fans everywhere. I and even in Hawaii, where we live in Hawaii, who wouldn't want to go to an away game in Hawaii, right? So of course. Away team should always have a lot of fans. Sorry, like especially if you're a Power Five team, you should have choke fans there. I don't want to be told that oh my god, you brought all these fans. Like that's awesome, but you should be because you are playing in Hawaii. Obviously, that's just like LA. Every year, someone's gonna come to SoFi, right? Visiting fan fans, and they're probably going to sit right on the tunnel. Can you imagine sitting on the visitors tunnel at SoFi Stadium, just like slapping the hands of your favorite team from say I don't know the seventh row in section 106, the club. I may have access to those exact seats, but um, that's for visiting fans of SoFi Stadium. You can be a Rams fan there too, or a Chargers fan. Oh, I don't, well, yeah, maybe we'll talk about Chargers. Um, but it's all about the interaction. So I miss all the fans. I miss all of you. Thank you so much. Please continue to support the podcast. Uh, and this will, gun will go on. This will be on YouTube. This will be, um, you know, uh, something that people can listen to on their commutes to work. And I hope that you all will be able to do that as well. And um, sorry for any you know connection issues we might have had tonight. But uh, thank you for staying with me. And uh, I just want to make sure that we are good to go. Let's see. I'm still live, but I'm basically wrapping up. So um, shout out everyone for, for joining tonight. Mahalo for being there. Take care. Aloha. Now, say them all in the same breath. <laughs> you got your neighbors, old bad jerseys. That was Wayne Coito and I think Fusha, also the super.